Okay. Um, if you really want to do volume ventilation with a cross vent, you, you can. Um, after all, the, the, the pneumatac is actually measuring the exhale tidal volume. But the problem is you, you just need to be aware that anytime you have a leak, that volume may not be accurate. But let's say in a case right now, I don't have a leak. What I would need to do is I'm going to need to see this set volume number. So I'm going to turn that on. So I want to say yes. So now, in this case, as I change my flow, it changes your set volume. Now, what you need to be aware of, and volume these days, you know, I used to do volume 25 years ago with an old uh, Seacrest ventilator in an IQ. Uh, and it certainly was not set up to do volume, but we knew that, you know, if you set a certain flow, at a certain eye time that you're going to deliver a certain volume. So the, the problem today is most of the ICU vents do all the calculations for you. They do the compliance factor of the circuit and they, you know, in some vents you can just say, Hey, I want, uh, I put in the patient's weight and you say, I want six per kilo and it'll do it. We have to kind of do the math here. So, this 44 here is the total number leaving the vent. So what I have to take away from that is how much volume I'm gonna lose in the circuit compliance. Well, our circuit has a compliance factor of about like 0.5. So the first thing that I would not do right now, I'm limiting my pressure at 17. So if I'm gonna do volume, I'm not gonna limit my pressure. So I wanna turn that all the way up. A lot of times you're going to have to make sure your high peak pressure limit is up so that you're not limiting and alarming there. So in this case, it's taken me 35 centimeters of pressure with five a peak to deliver that 44 through the, through the circuit. Now, again, to do the math, you take 35 centimeters minus your peak, so that's 30 centimeters. If my compliance factor is 0.5, that means that about 15 mLs of that volume is going to be lost. So that would mean I would expect about 29. So if I look at my exhale tidal volume, I'm 24. So you're, you're pretty close. But the, the point is, is that as you adjust your flow, you're changing that volume. So all I would really need to do, if I really wanted, say, uh, 25, you can adjust your flow up or down. If I wanted 20, as I turn my flow down, I'm actually decreasing that set volume. And you can dial in your volume that you want. So in this case, 36 is getting me uh, 1920 back from exhale tidal volume. Just be aware because if I have a leak, so I turn on this leak, now all of a sudden, instead of 20, I'm only getting 10. Well, you gotta be, could you get 20? The problem is, um, you know, leaks, can be positional in nature. So you turn the baby's head and you have a leak or you don't have a leak. So if I had to, well, I already turned up the max pressure. So if I turn up the flow so that I'm turning up my volume, could I get to a point where I get to 20? So there you are, you're at 20. But look what it's taking. It's taking 47 centimeters of peak pressure to get that 20. And here's the dangerous part. If you actually turn the baby's head and then all of a sudden you don't have a leak anymore. First of all, now I'm hitting my high pressure. I'm getting, taking 52 centimeters of pressure. Now look at my volume. 
I'm at 33, 34 instead of 20. So again, just, just be careful. For more products and information, please visit our website at www.biomeddevices.com.